Hi, and welcome to the Holly C Podcast, a show about expressing your brilliance with ease and flow. I'll show you how to take the woo-woo out of the clouds and apply it to real life for effortless action. This show is for world changers and future world changers. So if you know there's more to life and you're wondering what's next, this is your show. Hi, I'm Holly, your host. I'm a speaker, author, teacher of health, vitality, and spirituality, and also a dragon spirit guide. For those of you who have been following my podcast, you know that today is episode 84, and this is significant because this is the last episode of the Holly C. Show, Express Your Brilliance with Ease and Flow. And why is it the last one? As I've explained before, the universe gave me a directive to podcast until I got to episode 84 and then to stop. And I didn't even know why, but I was just like, okay, I'm going to listen to you universe. And things are developing. I am getting downloads and information as to what shape and form or what direction I should head into next. But Since it's been about a year and a half, it's been about a year and a half since I first started podcasting, and I feel like this episode is one of conclusion, one to go full circle, which was my original intention for this podcast was to help you express your brilliance with ease and flow, to speak your truth, to speak up, to stand in your own power and to recognize your power. So this episode is aptly titled, All the Things Left Unsaid. Now, I'm going to give you a warning. There will be all sorts of quote-unquote negative emotions that will come up in this episode. There will be anger, there will be shame, there will be hurt, there will be pain, there will be sadness, there will be grief, there will be embarrassment, but there will also be release There will also be clearing, there will be forgiveness, there will be compassion. And that's my intention. And I don't know exactly what will come out. I have a rough outline. But as you know, I tune into the universe a lot. And this time I'm surrendering and just going with the flow of it all. So what I mean by all the things left unsaid are, I'm thinking of those times in your life where you kept quiet, where you really wanted to say something, but you decided not to. And often it's because we don't want to rock the boat or we don't want to uh, make waves or cause any trouble for somebody else. So we just keep silent. And when you are quiet to maintain harmony, you're actually creating war within yourself. So I wanted to share with you three incidents in my life where I kept quiet and I should have said something. And I've been reflecting on this for the past few weeks as I've been thinking about what this last podcast episode would be about. And there's a theme to all three of these incidents, and you may recognize yourself in some of the things that I've experienced. You may have experienced similar things too. And I'm a person who doesn't regret things in life. Generally speaking, I have very, very few regrets. And it's not because I've done everything that I've wanted to. It's because I don't see the point in looking back and feeling bad about something that I didn't do from, you know, many years ago. But there are three things that do stick in my mind. These three incidents when I didn't speak up, I regret not speaking up. And I'm making a vow to myself, and I hope you will too, that you will always speak up when the opportunity comes up. Moving forward doesn't matter so much what happened in the past. So the first incident that comes to mind, I'm going to go chronological, was when I was in my early 20s, and I was into photography at the time and developing photographs in a dark room. I didn't have my own darkroom. There was a place in downtown Toronto and you could rent a darkroom space there. They had all these individual darkrooms and they had that, I forget what it's called, I think a developer or something. So you would work in the darkroom, produce your photo on your paper, feed it into this developer. And then on the other side, you would pull out your developed photograph. 
And of course, with a dark room, everything has to be dark, including the hallway joining all those individual dark rooms and where the feeder was for the developer machine. So you couldn't see anything. You could put your hand in front of your face and you could not see anything because it would ruin the photograph. So one time I was there and there was this older man who was probably 45, 50, who started talking to me when we were on the other side. So that's the side where it's all lit up and you can look at your photographs and there's like a light table and stuff. And he was, you know, friendly, but you, I got that kind of creepy vibe a little bit, but I was being polite and smiling and talking to him. And he mentioned he was there with his wife. So I thought, okay, he's not, you know, he's not coming on to me. He's just, you know, being friendly. I shouldn't take it. So per, I shouldn't be thinking that I'm getting a creepy feeling from him. Anyhow, later that evening, I was at the developer and I was feeding in a photo and somebody was walking past behind me and they brushed up against me and I actually apologized, but they didn't just brush up against me. Their hand actually cupped my bum. So they were getting a, they were cupping a feel of my ass basically. And it all happened so quickly. And then they just kept continuing down the hallway. And at I actually apologized at first because I thought I had bumped into their hand by accident. And then my brain was processing it going, wait a second, that hand was in the shape of my butt, you know, and it was palming me. And then the person was, you know, several more feet down the hall. And I had this impulse to yell really loudly, whoever just grabbed my ass, don't fucking do that again, or I'm going to break your fucking wrist. And I could have because I was studying karate at the time too. And you know what I did? I did not say a word. Instead, I froze. I thought, no, I can't yell that out. What if it was an accident? Oh, I don't know. And then I ran out from the dark hallway, came out into the lit area. And then I saw that man. I saw him with his wife, but they were all looking like they were uh, just working on their photographs. And I'm like, I'm not sure, was it him? Because I didn't know who had grabbed my butt, but then I remembered him being kind of creepy talking to me. And then again, later, somebody was, when I was putting pictures into the developer, they were also feeling around, pretending to be feeling around where they were, and they kept touching my hands. And again, I went out to see who the heck could that have been. And it was the same man out there. And I was very upset. I called my friend. She told me I should report it to the uh, people, the staff there. And I'm like, are you sure? I don't want to cause any trouble. You know, he's there with his wife. That's the thought process I had. But at least I did go report it to the staff. And you know, the first thing they said to me, they said, are you sure it really happened? I mean, that was the backdrop of what it was in the early 90s, which was, gosh, that was almost 30 years ago, 25 years ago. But, you know, having lived through it, you, you think, well, that was a way more progressive time than the 1950s. But was it that progressive when the female staff member asked me if I was sure it had actually happened? I really regret not yelling something or confronting that man. The second incident, yeah, I know, moving along. <laughs> the second incident was with my manager. It was pretty close to around the same time, maybe a couple of years later. I was in my mid-twenties. And I had been in a car accident. And I was in a lot of pain. I had uh, experienced whiplash and I was in a lot of pain. But I think that happened on the Sunday, but I also knew on Monday we had two new people starting. I had already resigned from my position. I was planning to do some backpacking through Europe. And we had two new people joining who were supposed to replace me. Yeah, two people to replace me. I was doing all the work. I couldn't say anything. You know, I never spoke up and said, you were giving me too much work. I just 
took it all in and did all the work. But that's not the thing I regret. Not the thing that I carry forward and still regret. What I regret... Well, I have to set this up. So I got in a car accident. I was in a lot of pain. I knew two employees were coming in. They needed to be trained. And I also knew my boss was going to be away that day. So first off, if I look back with, you know, hindsight, I'm like, who the heck schedules new people joining your team when you're going to be away? Like she should have just scheduled them for Tuesday. But I guess she knew I was going to be there. And sure enough, in spite of being in a car accident the day before and being in excruciating pain. So now that I think about it, it might have been a Saturday. So two days before, let's say, I went in to the office and I was in so much pain. But I went in there to train those two people. And uh, in the couple, two, three weeks that I still had of employment, I was there every single day to make sure these people got trained. And there wasn't enough time, so they actually asked me to come in for an extra day or two. And I thought, you know, I can use the money because I quit my job. I'm planning to go backpacking, so I agreed. Now, during these two weeks, I also went for acupuncture treatments and doctor's appointments. But I scheduled those close to my lunch break, and I missed minimal time, like maybe a half hour here or there. Keeping in mind, I never called in a single day off work despite being in a traumatic car accident. Anyway, on those last days when I came in and I had agreed to come in to finish off the training, my boss said to me, when I asked her about getting paid for those days, she said, oh, I thought that this would just make up for those times you were away. You would just even out and I wasn't planning on paying you. And what I regret And here come the tears. I regret not speaking up then. Because what I wanted to say was that I am in so much pain. Do you know how much pain I'm in right now? That's what I wanted to say. I wanted to say, like I did tell her, you know, I never... Those doctor's appointments, I did them on my lunch break. I, you know, stayed late to make up for that time. You know, I want to be paid for this time. I'm leaving my job. This money, you know, it was probably only a couple hundred dollars. It made no difference to the company, but it made a huge difference to me at the time. But I didn't say anything. I just sucked it all in. And I should have just walked out that door. But I thought, no, I have to be here to train these two people. They don't deserve this. And so I stayed. And I felt so much anger. And even now I feel why I'm crying is because I feel like I let myself down. I feel so bad for that person, Holly, the 26-year-old Holly, who took that, who was suffering, who didn't get paid for the sacrifices she made, who was not acknowledged for what she did, and who chose that upon herself to do that, when she should have just said, you know what, bugger off everyone, I'm in a car accident, you'll figure it out, you'll find somebody else to train these people. And that's what I should have done. And so that's one of the things I regret. I just want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you guys listening. So now I'm crying because I just feel so much love for my listeners, for you still being here to listen to me and I hope that in some way these things that I've been sharing with you in this podcast help you be seen and heard too that you see and hear yourself and that you speak up and that you find the courage within yourself to speak up for yourself to advocate for yourself (sighs) okay everybody take a deep breath in and just release. Ah, so if you can think of times where you were um, perhaps sexually harassed and told it was nothing or told that it was your fault or told it was something you did or wasn't a big deal, it was a big deal. Like one example I want to give. So before I get to the third incident, um, there was not too long ago a reporter who was reporting live at a race like a marathon. And while live, this man ran up and smacked her butt. 
and she was, you know, very visibly upset, and the man has been charged. Uh, but there were so many people, like, saying, what's the big deal? You know, guys do this all the time. It's like in the locker room, they slap each other's butts, and the, you know, football team or whatever. It was just a, like, slap on the butt. And she's fine. So why is she making such a big deal about this? This man, oh, you know, he's married. He's got two daughters. He's, you know, a Cub Scout leader. He's some, uh, I think he was a minister or something at his church, something like that, or a group leader. Don't ruin his life just because you got a little slap on the butt. Um, But, (laughs) bad pun intended, but, but to me, that's not the right way to look at it. It's like saying if you had your cell phone in your bag or on your desk at work and then somebody steals it and then it happens to be that within a few hours this person got caught, your phone was returned to you, so nothing really happened. All you missed out on was checking messages for a couple hours, which is probably a good thing because there are probably so many of them, right? So why charge the other person for stealing your phone? I mean, it was only gone off your desk for a couple of hours. You didn't have use of it for a couple of hours, but that's not a big deal. Everybody can go without a cell phone for two hours. It's probably better. Therefore, that person should not be charged for stealing your cell phone because everything worked out fine. Uh, but the crime was stealing your cell phone. And... This man, he was clearly at least twice the size of the reporter, so Annie was running, too. Annie wound up his hand when he slapped her. So was that going to hurt her? Yeah, so it is not the same as a bunch of guys on a team slapping each other's butt with a towel in the locker room. One, those men are all on equal footing with each other. They're all large men, all physical, close, you know, close in size, physically to each other. The other thing, too, is that they know each other, not like a complete stranger. If you're not consenting to it, it is not fine. But it's interesting how the culture has evolved to create this toxicity that we perpetuate. And I say we because... Now, I'm not saying victim bling, but I'm saying that there are times where we, and myself included, we accept these cultural norms. And I remember one thing that the reporter said that really struck in my mind. Somebody asked her what was going through her mind, and she said guilt. She felt guilty, but she didn't choose to make the decision while the cameras were rolling to run behind an attractive woman and give her a big smack on the butt. That man made that decision himself. He saw the cameras. He knew he was being filmed. He had a number on his race bib. He should have thought differently. And any consequences that come about are because he made that decision. Okay. Now I'm feeling the anger. (laughs) Sorry, guys. Uh, I appreciate you following this journey with me. And I want you actually to be feeling this anger too. Because if you've experienced anything like this and you're angry about it, just let it come to the surface. You don't have to repress it anymore. Let's do another deep breath in. So deep breath in. And release. (sighs) And once more, in through your nose. Out through your mouth. Ah. And once more, in through your nose. And release. Ah. It's not your responsibility to hold that anger anymore. Have compassion for yourself. Mm. And there will be a dragon spirit meditation as part of this podcast episode. All right. Last incident. Incident number three. I think I was, let's see, late 20s. So these are things then that I've been holding on to for 30 years. (laughs) 
regrets from 30 years ago. And I can tell you, I can feel energy moving in my chest, in my heart, uh, like a, a, the chi flowing. It's almost a little bit uncomfortable. It's because it's like when something is blocked a long time and uh, energy is pushing through, it's like you feel it, like the stretching. That's what I'm feeling right now. Kind of like if you haven't stretched, touched your toes in a long time and then you reach for them, there's that point where it feels uncomfortable. And that's kind of what I'm feeling right now, like this opening. So I hope you're feeling it too. Like if it, it shouldn't be painful, but it does feel like kind of a stretching and opening up. And then that, that is really good. It means the energy is flowing, stuff that you've held onto, that's weighted you down, that's been this dark spot in your heart is now clearing. The light is shining on, on this area of your body and you can let it go. Okay, third incident. So I was at work and it was um, really stressful. I worked in the internet industry and our company in particular competed by uh, taking on really large projects and underbidding on the price. So we had to really pinch uh, in terms of working really hard and not getting compensated for it uh, because we weren't on hourly wage. We just had a fixed salary. And so the scope was huge, but we still had you know, the same number of people to do it. And we had less time to do it because the company would compete on timeline too. So more work, less time, same number of people. Recipe for super stress, right? And so as a result, it created a lot of tensions uh, between uh, co-workers and between departments because uh, everybody only had a certain slice of time to deliver what they needed to deliver uh, in order to keep things moving along. Now, the backdrop to this was that I had recently been promoted to be like a team lead. And one of my coworkers who had been working there longer than I had by maybe about a year, he apparently was not happy about that. He wanted to be promoted. And so my manager reassured me that they talked to him, that everything was good, he, that this person, we'll call him Dirk, that Dirk was okay with it. And the reason I had been promoted was because I was just better suited for the job. And so I met with Dirk and Dirk seemed cool and he seemed like he was very supportive of me and wanted to, you know, improve how he worked so, and learn from me so that he could be promoted next. And so I worked closely with Dirk. Dirk was like my right hand man. And I would delegate tasks to him, like communicating with the visual design department. So there was some conflict between our department and theirs because we were the ones coding the stuff that they would design and their conflict was baked into the project because the designers obviously want to put forth really lovely beautiful designs and push the edge uh push the boundaries of what can be done that looks good for them right whereas the coders we have to get the stuff done on time and we also interface with the programmers, the hardcore programmers who make it all work behind the scenes. And they are basically, no way we're not doing any of this. Uh, so that put me in a tight spot. And there was one time where Dirk came up to me and he said, the designers want to do this. And I remember thinking, oh my God, there's no way this is possible. We just don't have the time to do this. And there's no way that the programmers are going to go for it. So I said that. I said, you know, I don't, there's no way this is going to happen because there's not enough time. And then Dirk said, exactly my thinking, Holly. I totally agree with you. I thought it was a stupid idea. I'll go tell the designers that no way this is happening. And I thought, okay, taken care of, right? Later that day, I was sitting at a different desk because I needed to use the scanner there. And this desk happened to be on the opposite side of where Dirk sat. Now, the cubicles had these really tall walls so that even if you were sitting on the other side, there was no way you could know that there was another person uh, directly opposite of you. So while I was sitting there, I heard Dirk speaking with the designer. And we'll call the designer Chuck. So Dirk was speaking to Chuck. And Dirk said to Chuck, yeah, man, I know. I thought it was a great idea, but I brought it up with Holly and she said, no way. She shut it down. I was totally gunning for you guys, but she totally shut it down. And I regret not saying this is what was running through my mind. I wanted to say, uh, Dirk, I'm sitting here 
on the other side, I can hear you. That's not what happened. But I didn't do it. Instead, I thought to myself, if I say something, this is going to create disharmony with the team. I'm going to create a problem with Dirk, as opposed to me sucking it up and still smiling to him. It's going to cause a problem between Dirk and the designer because, I mean, Dirk outright lied to him. And then that's not going to help the relationship between our coding department and the design department. So I'll just fall on the sword and pretend I didn't hear it. And I did fall on the sword because Chuck really disliked working with me. And so did his boss. They made my life miserable there because they thought I was all out against their department. Because that's what Dirk was playing. He was throwing me under the bus so that he could get my job, basically. And I regret not saying anything about that. I don't know if there have been times where you've been working and maybe somebody took credit for your work and you didn't say anything or your manager told you to do something a certain way and then you did it that way and then they chastised you later for doing it and you didn't speak up because you were afraid of losing your job or, you know, causing waves. I'm here to say, speak up. Don't carry regrets for 30 years. And if you have been carrying regrets for 30 years, be free. Now's the time to let them go. Be free. Let that weight lift off your shoulders. So now would be the time that we're going to enter the dragon spirit space to help you clear and release what you've held inside, what you've found difficult to say in the past, any regrets that you have, and to be more loving and compassionate to yourself, to forgive yourself, and to grow your courage to speak up for yourself. Because when you speak up for yourself, you are no longer creating war within yourself. You're creating peace and harmony within yourself. And from there, that's the only way there can be true peace and harmony in the world. Because even though things can seem okay at the surface, if the underlying resentments and anger is not addressed, then it all comes forth and it will eventually bubble over much like it is in the world today right now. Okay, so again, deep breath in and release. (sighs) And I'm going to ask you to place your hand on your heart right now. And we're going to enter the dragon spirit space with three dragon breaths. So when you breathe in, breathe in through your nose. And when you exhale, if you feel like letting out a sigh or sound, like a ha, as you breathe out, please do so. And I really hope that... If you've listened to all 83 previous podcasts and you've never let out an exhale sigh or sound, that you will have the courage to do so today, right now. All right, hand on your heart. Breathe in through your nose. And breathe out. And again, in through your nose. And breathe out. And once more, in through your nose. And breathe out all that rage you've held inside. Ha! Now take a moment and listen. What do you hear? (laughs) I hear my cat snoring. What I mean by listen is listen to um, inside. What do you hear? What do you hear within yourself? Do you feel stillness, quiet? Recognize that, hmm, you're going to lead some people through this just so they can experience this quiet. So breathe in through your nose and breathe out. Hmm. And again, in through your nose and then out. Hmm. When you're breathing, pay attention to in between the breaths. So right when you've reached full inhale and just before you exhale. So once again, breathing in. This space. Now breathe out. Hmm. This is the quiet we're talking about. Many of you were already in a state of 
hearing the silence. But for those who needed this exercise to demonstrate the quiet, the space in between, mm, that's it right there. Let's do this all together. Breathing in and breathing out. Notice this quiet is different than the quiet when you don't speak up. When you are not voicing something that really needs to be voiced in the moment, there isn't quiet inside you. There's a lot of noise. Breathe in through your nose. And easy, relaxed breath out. Hmm. And if you feel like resting your hand on your lap, feel free to do so, wherever it feels comfortable. How many times have you not spoken up for yourself? Have you not advocated for yourself? And how much mm, chatter was going on in your mind when you were not speaking up? So mm, when you keep that chatter inside, how are you to find peace and serenity within yourself, harmony within yourself, when there's so much chatter. Eventually, the chatter does go away, but for many people, it's something that they ruminate on. They think about it for a long time, as evidenced by me even, holding something inside for 20 years. Breathe in through your nose, and release. <sighs> now, what happens when you don't speak up is that you hold these emotions inside you. Again, as evidenced by me. Tears shed for a young woman who was physically in excruciating pain, but felt she was doing the right thing and not even being acknowledged for it. Breathe in through your nose and release. Ah. So not only do you remember the pain that you feel for not speaking up, you remember the self-judgment also as uh, damaging and as hurtful. The judgment that you let yourself down, the mm, lack of forgiveness to yourself for who you were at that time. We want you right now to think of an incident where you did not speak up, one that you regret, that you've held inside. And now imagine as if you were mm, looking at a snow globe. So you may want to even hold your hands like you're looking at like a, a snow globe or a crystal ball. And you can see yourself, you can see everything unfolding in there as it had in the past. Breathe in through your nose and breathe out. Hmm. And let it play out like a movie. Allow the emotions to play too. So it's almost like you've got this virtual reality device that lets you re-experience in a memory, including the emotions. And you can feel that mm, energy block in your throat. It's like a plug that you stick there to keep yourself from speaking up. And then afterwards, so fast forward the playback and you remember how you were feeling afterwards. Maybe you were livid. Maybe you were mm, feeling embarrassed. You were feeling sad, painful, whatever. Most of you were feeling angry, though. And then fast forward a few more years where the, mm, the anger has subsided from your conscious mind, but you look back and you judge yourself. And you see yourself judging yourself for failing to speak up. And you see the criticism you are, in this judgment, there is criticism, self-criticism. Breathe in through your nose. Imagining this crystal ball snow globe, filling with snow, swirling, dissolving, releasing. Till all you have left is a winter wonderland. You know, where the trees are, mm, there's a fresh coat of snow on the trees and it's like they've been painted by nature with this fluffy white outline. And you don't have to go outside, so mm, you're nice and warm and cozy. Or if you do go outside, it's like one of those nice, sunny, crisp days where even though there's a little bit of bite in the air, 
it still feels pleasant and to admire the beauty. So um, picture yourself then in the side, this globe now, as you are now, who you are today, and you're admiring this beauty. And you may play in the snow, you may make angels, you may throw snowballs, you may trace your initials in the snow, throw snow up in the air, and snow is clean. You'd stick your tongue out, eat a snowflake, and feel the serenity, the joy, the smile on your face. And know that and this is all you need to feel to forgive yourself. There's no need to keep telling yourself the story that you don't forgive yourself. You can just let it all go. Now set the snow globe down. Now imagine back at that incident where you didn't speak up. You are coming through as who you are now, knowing your power. And you come through and you choose to speak. What would you say? You may even say it out loud. What would I say? Hmm. I would not yell whoever just walked down the hallway and grabbed my ass. Don't do it again or I'll break your fucking wrist. I would say, who just grabbed my ass and is walking down the hallway? I am following you right now and I will confront you when we are on the other side. And it would have been different, and I would not have accepted excuses like, oh, it was an accident. I would have said, no, it wasn't an accident because your hand was in the shape of my butt, and I felt it cupping my butt. And I would have, hmm, the wife was there. I know her name was Mary. That's what the staff told me. They said, Mary's husband? But this is so long ago, the chances of this person ever hearing this will be pretty much zero. So that's why I will say her name now. Because I do not need to protect Mary's husband any longer. I do not need to protect Mary from who her husband is. Mary knows. There are things left unsaid Mary needed to speak up to. And that's not my job to keep her in her safe bubble. Breathe in through your nose. And breathe out. <sighs> Notice how mm, a lot has been mm, lifted. You've gotten things off your chest. Quite literally, that saying is about releasing stuff that you are holding in your heart no longer needed. Breathe in through your nose and release. Ah, just know that you have, mm, by releasing, you have more courage now. So hold your hands out again and imagine a gemstone. This is going to be your gemstone to remind you to speak up, to remind you that you have power, to remind you that you are multifaceted, that you are beautiful, that you shine with a brilliance more brilliant than any diamond in the world. And you have clarity, more clarity than the most perfect diamond. So imagine this large gem floating above your palms, this energy glowing. And then take this gem, this energy gem, place it in your heart. Imagine placing it in your heart and allowing the light to shine from your heart up through your chest, through your windpipe, through your mouth, past your lips. So that moving forward, you will have more courage to speak your truth. Do you know what this brilliance is, this light shining? It is your truth. And on that note, we will exit the dragon spirit space. Place your hand on your heart and take three dragon breaths in through your nose and out. Ha! Ah. 
And once more, in through your nose. And out. Ha. And again, in through your nose. And out. Ha. And just in that last few seconds there, I got more clarity too about what the new direction is. Like I was already thinking this, but I got crystal clear, like that feeling in my body that it's time for me to step up and to lead others in speaking their truth. And there, that's like the the diamond for me. And there's so much resonance and energy there. And I might not know like the physical forms of how this will take shape right now, but the energy is there and I really feel it. It feels like it's like, you know, something activated in my DNA. That's all I can say. All cells activated. And that I'm here to help you speak your truth. So thank you so much for listening to today's episode, our very last episode of the Holly C Show, Express Your Brilliance with Ease and Flow. I do have a favor to ask if this podcast episode touched your heart and you know other people that it would be beneficial for them to hear it please please share this podcast episode with them and it will always be available on my website at www.hollyc.com h-o-l-l-y-t-s-e.com and i will keep you guys posted of what this physical form of guiding people to speak speak their truth, what it's going to manifest as. And if you'd like, you can also sign up for my weekly wisdom newsletter. So I tune into Dragon Spirit at the beginning of each week on Monday morning to share a message from the universe to help guide and support you for the week. And you can find that on my website too. It's in the uh, right side of any episode. So you have to actually go into the link that says episodes. And I'm working on that piece of my website too, but you know, only so many hours in the day. Uh, But I I am feeling this energy here and where the energy is, that's where I follow. And may you also follow that brilliant energy and brilliant light in your life too. Thank you for listening. And I sincerely hope we will reconnect again soon. So best way to stay in touch is on my website with the weekly wisdom newsletter. Thank you for listening to this podcast series, sending you much love and light. Bye for now.